Good morning. Great to have you with us. Lots to talk about in the wake of Tuesday night's uh, election, state primary election. And here to help us make sense of it all, two of the city's sharpest political minds. State Senator Lydia Edwards, Democrat from East Boston. She's running unopposed for re-election in November. And journalist Lisa Kaczynski of Politico, author of the must-read daily Massachusetts playbook and co-host of the must-listen horse race podcast. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're all rested and, and, and uh, from the other night, yes. right? Okay, Slightly good. Recovered. Excellent. Yeah, me too. I slept like a baby last night. So, uh, Senator, in the, um, uh, uh, a moderate in Massachusetts yes. might be considered ultra liberal in many other states. Mm -hmm. But that said, Tuesday night's results within the Democratic Party sure looked like a good night for moderates and a bad night for the left. True or false? False. Okay. Okay. Tell me why. Well, because at the end of the day, there's, it, there's very little, very little difference between a lot of what people consider moderates and what people consider to the, to the left here in our Democratic Party. Um, this is a night, honestly, where I think it was more of a, a question of messaging than anything, not a rejection, just a, are you hitting people on their day-to-day -day needs and wants and concerns, or are we talking policy? I think some of my dear friends on the, on the lefter side uh, speak a little above people's heads, and I think what we're learning now is if you really want people to trust and, and vote, you need to speak to them in their daily needs and wants. Is that right, Lisa? Yeah, I mean, what you saw, um, you know, to the people who, as you said, are, you know, a little bit more to the left, you saw every candidate endorsed by kind of the major far-left progressive groups, Progressive Massachusetts, Our Revolution Massachusetts, lose or not even make it to primary day. And we're talking about State Senator Sonia Chang Diaz and Quentin Palfrey in that regard, where they dropped out before, um, you know, some or all votes were cast. So... Yeah, there is, uh, there is an issue with messaging. There is also, um, as progressive activists were telling me a little bit, a lot of these candidates didn't have the name recognition, the campaign organizations. They struggled to raise campaign cash in what's now a super PAC era. Mm -hmm. And those things all made a difference. Fair points. However, lack of cash certainly wasn't a problem for Attorney General candidate Shannon Liss Reardon. Nearly $10 million of her own money. Unprecedented, certainly, for the Attorney General's race. In that race, both she and Quentin Palfrey, the other candidate, tried to use Andrea Campbell's support for charter schools as a weapon against her. How'd that work out, Lisa? Not too well. Not too well, given the results that we saw. And that's an issue that had tried to, um, that people have tried to use against her before. Mm -hmm. And they spent a lot of this race saying, you know, super PACs are going to wait in charter schools, um, charter school people who support them, funding, they're going to put so much money behind. And yet we didn't really see that right until the very end. Yeah, what'd you make of that? I, I, listen, they had to attack her on something because I, I was with her. I think she's amazing. Her story is unmatched. Her ability to be and speak and inspire people was unmatched in their race, so they had to find something. And again, to me, that's the left speaking above people's heads. Do you really think deep down inside when they're thinking about who's going to be the attorney general, the people's person, the person I'm going to call if I don't get my money back from some company, the person I'm going to call if I'm going to get, don't get my money back if I'm not paid, do you really think they care? I don't, yeah. and they clearly didn't. One last quick thing. We've got to take a break. Uh, there was all sorts of fuss made, and I hate this about politics, about endorsements. <sighs> I, I understand they can matter sometimes. I think for the most part they don't matter. Did, but did Mayor Wu and Senator Warren damage themselves politically by, in particular, endorsing Liz Reardon in the AG's race and Ricardo Arroyo in the Suffolk County DA's race? Quick, quick thought on that. Because I do endorsements, um, I'm always going to be a pro endorsement <laughs> okay. and think that they do matter. But let's let a friend of mine said this, and I firmly believe sometimes you're the bug and sometimes you're the windshield. And that's I happen to be on Tuesday a windshield, but I'm going to have yeah. a bug night. Every yeah. politician will. So I, I think it's their their brand and who they are and the work that they've done for decades is not going to be at all. And the voters are the windshield wipers, right, Lisa? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, I will say that a lot of times after an election, most people kind of, you know, forget, you know, no offense, who people have endorsed and, and why, you know, voters move on to the next thing. Most people move on. But these were two pretty big ones to be on the yeah. wrong side of. Yeah. By the way, I noticed no Democratic unity event like they normally have a breakfast the day after this year. But, but not yet. That, that's kind of inside baseball. All right.